All right. Welcome to Dropping the Gloves. Quick intro. Tyler Ennis is here. I just want to talk to Tyler, so I don't want to do a horse and around interview. Tim's here, too. So how you been, man? Long time no see. I know. I've been good. In uh, Ottawa, back around for the second time. Um, we're in Tampa Bay right now, so it's nice to get some sun, but uh, life is good. How about you? Not bad. I was actually, I was actually thinking you don't like sun. Cause I was doing a little research and I'm like, gosh, Tyler, the furthest South he's played in the NHL is Buffalo. I know. What? Isn't uh, that nuts? You've been in the show for how many years now? Over a decade. Yeah. You've been... This is my 13th year. I haven't caught uh, too many uh, sunny cities, but uh, yeah, I know it's been a while. So. Why though? Do you just not care about going South or you just, you love, you love the North that much? No one want no one wants me down here. I guess <laughs> no one wants me down here. But uh, yeah, I know a lot of cold cities. A lot of cold cities. You're a so. cold weather guy. Well, I w- I was excited to talk to you. It's always tricky when you talk to guys. You know, listen, I'm not. I'm I'm a realistic guy. Ottawa, you guys go on hot streaks. You have a couple cold streaks mixed in there. We both played on Buffalo together. We were atrocious. Right. terrible and worse but then i'm like okay box score last night eight to two beat the best team in the nhl I'm like enzo's flying i checked the box score i'm looking for points i'm like tick 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 he picked up an assist on the last one there i picked, up, there. <laughs> I picked I was... up a second assist on the eighth goal so yeah i was uh, i was happy after the game for sure <laughs> and then i was like okay check the box score he's got one assist but eight two he's got to be at least plus four the kid you know, was dash one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had my guy, but uh, yeah, dash one. Uh, but no, eight, two. Yeah. It was a great win. So yeah, like you said, young team, sometimes, uh, you know, you kind of have your highs are high, your lows are low. And uh, we're trying to even that out a little bit right now, but we're on a, a nice little run, but we got a lot of ground to catch up. Yeah. Is it weird to be the old guy? We were talking before you're 32. We, we had Brady Kachuk on the show a few months ago. Yeah. Is it weird to be like the guy people look to maybe? It, it is weird. It's weird. I, I maybe uh, don't act as old as I should sometimes, but um, yeah, it's definitely strange. I mean, I remember when I first came in the league, how uh, the older guys were like, you know, time flies. Like you really got to enjoy it. And uh, it's really true. You know, it's, it's my 13th year now and it, it seems like, uh, you know, snap of a finger and it's, uh, it's flying by. So it's fun though. It's fun to, uh, you know, the, the young guys give you some youth for sure. Um, it's interesting to see how, uh, you know, the generations are different, but, uh, you know, the kids are great. They're, uh, really talented and, and they got great attitude. So it's a fun team to be on. Yeah, I bet. We, we'll, we'll touch on the, the kids in a minute. Did you ever imagine Medicine Hat, Tigers, 15 years ago, you'd be sitting here talking to Tim and I? You're literally probably one of the top, well, 32. It's hard to get to 32 years old now in the NHL, to be honest. Like when you look around yeah. the league, most guys are 22 and under. Right. You're, you're a dying breed. What what <laughs> keeps Tyler Ennis in the NHL right now? Um. I think, uh, well, one, um, you know, at this point in my career, you have to have uh, someone in your corner. And DJ has been in my corner since I played at Toronto. So he gave me, you know, a chance. Um, And I think you have to be able to adapt. You know, I don't play as much as I used to. I'm in a a bit of a different role. Um, And and I think that that's important as you age, you have to be able to – you know, do different things and, and, you know, uh, you know, grow with the game and, and let other guys kind of take over. Um, so, and just enjoy it. You know, I think you have to have a good attitude every day. You have to have fun at the rink and I have a lot of fun at the rink and, um, you know, just really day by day, have fun. I will say that I know I've been around, I've been on more teams than you have. You are, and were one of the nicest, most enjoyable, funnest guys to be a teammate with. We were only teammates for two years, but I still remember. And you were a kid back then. You were like probably yeah, 22. Yeah, I would say probably 20. 23 maybe. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So, well, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, you were uh, you were very funny and a great teammate and uh, also very uh, enjoyable to be around. I think we sat beside each other on the plane. I think but, we did. Uh, 
but uh yeah i think uh that's a huge part of it though always having a good attitude you know i mean also you got to put things in perspective too there's still so much that i'm like you can't take for granted uh you know flying charters and staying in great hotels and eating the food that we eat and you know living the lifestyle is just uh it's uh, it's a it's a blessing so uh you know i enjoy it for sure and uh it's been uh it's been a fun ride so what's it like you you touched on it just a couple seconds ago you went from being the guy the yeah. the top goal scorer on the team leading leading the team in goals making you know a lot of do re mi and now you're making league men yeah. you're still kicking around not that that's a terrible thing like i i lived no. that for 10 years is it hard yeah. mentally to be like okay i'm not the guy <clears throat> i'm like a third fourth line guy now and i, I used to I be think, yeah i think the transition was hard yeah you know but it's kind of like now i'm like i'm okay uh but it's kind of like the evolution of of life a little bit you know what i mean like, <laughs> when it when it was happening and then i started you know playing less and you know my role started changing that's that's hard because you try to figure out why and and you still think that you know you should be uh playing more and in a in a better role and um you know injuries are a factor but uh i think when you embrace it that's when uh you know you end up playing better and and you can um you know extend your career longevity um is important and i think the biggest thing for that is uh, like you're talking about um really just embracing the change when it happens you know so you you appreciate me a little more not paying for, <laughs> not paying for dinners as quickly as i used to <laughs> yeah. i always appreciate you johnny always looking over for somebody else to pick up that check it's tough there's a couple less zeros in the paycheck tyler you know that yeah now. i know i know i'm a little stingier now than i once was so sure. let's let's push it back you're you're i like to kind of just all encompassing career. When we talk to guys, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you love the sun. You're in Tampa Bay right now. You want to get out and hit the beach, right? That's what you, that's what you got planned after this. I'm guessing you and uh, Brady. I'll probably uh, get some sun. I, I try to get as much as I can. Cause there's not a whole lot back in Ottawa. So I, uh, I get pale really quickly. So I need to get uh, as much sun as I can. Do you have uh, any tattoos? No, zero. You Why got not? a couple I got a couple. Well, one. I don't know one. what I want on my body for the rest of my life. Like, I, I, I can't think of something that I would want. I have nothing against tattoos. I think they're cool. I yeah. just don't know what I would get. You know, I don't want to be uh, Drew Stafford. The, uh, the Canadian flag on my calf. You know what I mean? <laughs> I almost got one of those ones when I was like 18. It was like the, the skin tear it off and underneath it's a canadian flag in there <laughs> yeah. like, i like ns on my then my name bar on my back with like the hockey canada logo or something you know i can't yeah so like i just don't know anything you know cool enough that i would put on but maybe one day we'll see you won a couple golds though at the world juniors why did did you guys not want to get matching tattoos you know back yeah. to, like why, why would you not want to do that um yeah, well, I th yeah, that was kind of the trend for a while going on the calf. And I, I want to take as much uh, focus off my calves as possible. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, it's just it's never been my thing, but maybe maybe one day. You got a pew, don't you, Johnny? Just one big one on my side. It, it, it was oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my wife wrote it on my wedding ring. So it kind of has some sentimental value. Tyler, when you look in the mirror, what's the best part of your body? Definitely not my face. Stop um, it. You're, you're fishing for compliments right now. I'm, I know what you're doing. <laughs> um, that's a good question. You know, yeah. I've, been doing some, I've been doing some core lately. I've, I've been really tightening up my, my frame. So the was boys that because the talking. Florida trip was coming up? You knew tarps are off on the beach? You know what? It's really come down to playing less minutes. I've had to focus on what I'm eating and actually like train a little bit because like I used to be like, like quite a few minutes and I'm gonna get away with eating whatever I want. And then I was like, whoa, I'm uh I'm kind of getting a little loose here. So I had to tighten things up a bit. Do you get chirped on the ice now that you're like a third, fourth line guy? Does people like rip on you? Hey Ennis, what happened, you bum? 
Not too much, but uh, I have been told to retire a couple times. Uh, <laughs> um, but not too bad. Not too bad. I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty light out there. You know, I, I like to to chat a little bit. So yeah. I have I have fun out there. Who's the best guy you like to just chop it up with? Not chirping. Like who's the guy who's just fun to chat with on the ice? Uh, I love I love uh, just kind of mucking it up with Tyson Berry. He's 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 great out there. He's uh, he's always got something funny to say. He's always got chirping going. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of guys up. I like I like I like being light. I like being yeah. light. Up. Have fun. Did you Blue play with Tyson around. in Toronto then at Edmonton? No, I played with him at the Worlds one year, and then um, I played I played with him in Edmonton last year. I, never, I missed him in Toronto. What's it like? You know, you should you should try to get him on. He's he's a, he's a funny guy. I'll have to ask him for your number. Ask you for his number. That's how he, I do things. Just word him out. Yeah, yeah. You you would love him. What's he's, it? So I played with a couple of good players. You obviously, everybody asked what who's the most skilled guy. You're top of my list, Tyler. Oh wow, thank you. What's it like? You, you haven't seen me lately, then. I've seen oh. you on the ice. I saw that assist last night. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> Not <Sure>. nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should see my highlight reel. It's just full of second assists. It's all I got. <laughs> I, remember, I, I remember you scored. Um, and then you came by the bench. And you're like, all right, I'm going home. And then you like think that you were going to just leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ruin this game. This high. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. I, that's So, okay. What was I talking about? You, you mentioned uh, I met him at World's. You've played on Edmonton and Toronto. You've played with the best players all over the world. You, you've always managed to find these guys in your team. Is it weird? Like looking over, you're in Toronto, and there's Matthews and Marner and Tavares. You're in Edmonton, there is McDavid. Has there been anybody you've been like, holy cow, like that's Jason Palmerville when you got called up to the Sabres? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think every, every stage there's been, uh, you know, guys that uh, I remember playing with Timmy Connolly for the first yeah. time. Um, and this was when I, I was really young. So it was like my first, first training camp. And before that, I used to play a lot of like NHL video games. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I loved being Buffalo and Timmy was like my favorite player to, to play like on the video game. Yeah. And, uh, training camp, uh, after training camp, I was like, oh my God, this guy's so sick. And my buddies like from back home. We're like, hey, how was training camp? What was uh, who was the best player? I was like, Timmy Connolly. They're like, really? I was like, yeah, he's exactly like he is in the video game. Like he was just putting pucks through his legs, like toe dragging. Like he he was nuts. But um, yeah, there's so many guys that are just like, like like you said, Matthews. The first time I skated with him was crazy. Like he's he's so big and strong. He's got hands like Patty Kane. Like shoots it so hard. Did and you then see Patty Coletta. <laughs> yeah, Patty Coletta. <laughs> He's got hands like Patty Coletta. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, and then and then Connor. Connor's just yeah. it's absurd. It's not even doesn't even make sense. So you like because like I remember like I, that's I was known for like being skilled, and then yeah. I'm out here like with Connor, and I'm like, this is what is this? This isn't a human being. I'll be on the fourth line now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's why. That's just why I'm on the fourth line. Now. Okay, I get it. Yeah, that's right. now I understand what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, he's not even human. It's nuts. So you were growing up in Edmonton, a Sabres fan. How does that? How does that? Happen? No, I was. A, I was an Oilers fan, but I like playing. I like playing Sabres for that video game. I like. I like playing them on NHL. Yeah, I don't know. They're fun, but. So uh, I was an Oilers fan growing up, yeah. So playing right. for Edmonton was so cool. Then you get drafted by the Sabres out of Medicine Hat. Yeah. What was that like? Your first? Did you know you were going first round because you were almost second round? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was all over the place. Uh, I I didn't really want to go to the draft because I was kind of ranked like in and out. Yeah. Uh, the draft was in Ottawa, and I was like, oh, I'll just stay home. But my parents were like, you got you got to go. Like, what if you go in the first round? Like, how cool would that be? I was like, yeah, that makes sense. So we went and, uh, yeah, I got picked 26 to Buffalo and, uh, it was, I was just so happy. I was like, cause I was ranked, you know, kind of all over the map. I was small, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was a huge thrill just to go on stage and, 
you know, be a first round pick was like a dream come true. You played in the zoo, you played in the dub. You didn't, your, your first year wasn't a great team. You, you kind of stepped into the medicine hat. You guys were average. I'll, I'll, I'll be, you know, nice to you guys. Was it hard playing in that division? Cause I was out in Ontario. I tried out for the, Oh, I kind of didn't make it. Didn't make uh, the jump. The West is known as the zoo because there's fights. It's tough Western boys. It's a different yeah. league than the old and the Q. Was it tough? Especially it tough. 20 years ago, a guy your size. It was tough. Uh, it was, uh, it was fun though. We had a, we had a, a good crew, but yeah. uh, junior was so funny. Like there's so many just animals, just wild animals, but uh, it, it definitely was tough. We had uh, like back then, did you play with Derek Dorsett? You play with oh, yeah. you fought you fought I Doris, fought so. Derek, yeah. Doris is a wild man. Like he's a crazy, crazy human being. And uh he was like, you know, our heartbeat of our team. And he was just like he would fight every game. Like if you didn't, you know, play with as much intensity that he did, he would hold you accountable. And I was like, it was kind of eye-opening to go from, you know, your your minor systems in Edmonton, you know, where it's really just uh like your community team. Yeah. to the dub where you have like you know older guys that are just you know throwing bombs <laughs> just like yeah. really being intense and um but yeah it was uh it was it was it was fun though i mean it, it really was it was it was intimidating but like in a good way you know yeah do you think you got overlooked a little bit because you like how tall are you what are you five six i'm six two <laughs> I'm 6'2", 215 <laughs> That's the thing If you were 6'2", 215 You're a top two pick uh, Yeah, I mean Maybe But um, yeah, I'm 5'9 five, I'm five We'll go with 5'9 And uh, Sorry, so back then yeah, I was, I, yeah, back then I was even smaller And uh, But yeah it, I've always been small though. It's not like I have had to learn how to play small. I've always been small. So yeah. I had to learn. I've been learning since I was young, which I think was beneficial. You know, there's always those guys that grow a little bit when they're younger and then maybe they're not as big as they, you know, once were, and then they have a tough time adapting. I think it was beneficial to me to be small my whole life. So I mentioned you got the world juniors. You played with some, some pretty legit guys, you know, Tavares, PK, Evander, Peter Angelo. I didn't play internationally. I always, I was always torn whether I wanted to play or not. What was that like? Was that a validation for you? Like, listen, I, I belong here. You had a pretty good tournament. Did that feel just, how was that like? Making the World Juniors was a dream come true. I mean, I watched it like every other Canadian growing up every Christmas. Uh, so that was a huge goal of mine. Um and yeah, winning. We won uh, in Ottawa. Yeah. Um, in Ottawa, good. you in Ottawa, man. I tell you what. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, my draft was in Ottawa too. I said, yeah, so Ottawa. I've just been connected so much here. Um, but yeah, that was the year where Eberle scored with like five seconds left to to tie it against the Russians, which was wild. Um, so yeah, that was uh, it. Was awesome. It was a it was a great great experience. Gold medal, the whole thing. So. Um, dream come true so you you finish up juniors you're picked first round you go over to the ahl portland pirates you run into nathan gerby were yeah. you trying to follow in gerb's footsteps a short guy he won ahl player of the year you're coming in you're like oh man this guy knows what he's doing or did you just see nathan gerby like the piece of trash he is <laughs> and you're like i want nothing because gerb's been on the show and he was effing and jeff and the whole time i mean nathan calm it down a little bit what was that dynamic like between you and nathan I was, uh, I, I was always just like a fan of his, mm, um, liar. No, I, I respected what he did. Like, uh, cause he was like dominant in college, small guy. And like us small guys have a little fraternity. You stick together, you're, you're, uh, cheer for each other. So he was, uh, he was, he was on Portland, uh, pirates with, with me. And he was sick, like so good. Yeah. Uh, we played together a lot. He was, I mean, really creative, like talented, um, fun to play with. Uh, 
and, and yeah, really, really, really good player. But uh, I felt like he in Buffalo, he kind of got shortchanged a little bit. Like um, he didn't get a, 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 the opportunity that I got. I got more of an opportunity, um, you know, with power play and stuff. And yeah. Why do you think was, that is? I think probably because I was a first round pick. I think yeah. I probably got more of a, a more of an opportunity than he, he did. Um, he was the he was the rookie of the year in the in the AHL before uh, I got there. Um, yeah, you know things could have been for sure different for Nathan, but you know he had a great career and he 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 adapted to when maybe he had to. It's just that it was a little earlier than you know when I had to, but um, I think in a different scenario, he could have had a different role because yeah. his talent, his talent was thought, crazy. Oh, he had unbelievable. He still does have unbelievable skills. I always thought he had a little chip on his shoulder where he could have maybe had a little better. And I told him this as you kind of, you kind of complained a little bit, you know, be yeah. on the fourth line. Cause I, I used to see him a lot in Buffalo. I'm like, Gerbs, like, don't be so upset. Like you're, you're in the NHL, man. But yeah, he didn't like you. Cause you, he, he wanted to be you, Tyler. He hated you. <laughs> no, he did. He I, did. I, I I love Nate and his his dad's a, a great guy. Uh, you know, he's such a hard worker, but uh, he definitely has a chip on his shoulder. But that's what made him Nathan. You know, he yeah he chip on his shoulder that got him as far as it did. Um, but uh, is he is he out in Traverse with you? No, he moved out of here. We we didn't really hit it off, and he left. He's like, I'm, I'm out of here. So he moved back to the upper Michigan. Oh, really? He did. As I but remember, he, like, he was building the place up there. So he that. built it and then he left. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, what are you going to do? We just didn't, we just didn't see eye to eye. Boom, boom. <laughs> so you guys actually have a little bit of beef. I remember that picture uh, of you guys in the dressing room. Yeah. That is a, is a legendary photo. Do you have What's, that at? It's it's literally like the, the I know. size of outrageous. Well, because there was one where I was on my knees and we were like oh, seeing eye to eye. So hang on, is there? There's not actually beef between. Them. No, I love Nathan. I'm just teasing. <laughs> no, he's he's a good dude. But I I, I am in all honesty, I, I think he could have had a better attitude in Buffalo. He might have served them better, where yeah. he thought he deserved a little more than I think he he actually did. But I don't know that's yeah. a whole other show for another time. You mentioned chip on your shoulders. This is a Hockey Fights podcast. We're partners with HockeyFights.com. You probably know the website. You go there all the time. Oh, yeah. Look I've been face. on there once. I've been on there one time. That's what I was going to bring up. You've, been, you've had one career NHL fight, and it started yeah. off because you just got absolutely farmer tossed in front of the net by Ian Cole, <laughs> just like pigeon tossed, and you get up. What? <laughs> I was on that team when I was a healthy scratch. What is oh, going through your head? I could have used, used you there. I could have used. I could have used you there, Johnny. What, what was your game plan going in there, grabbing a? Oh no, Steen grabbed you. What? What you? I was just. Plan? I was like, I don't know what I was doing. I got. I got just blown up. And then I remember I looked at the ref and I was yeah. like, I was like, is there a penalty there? And he nothing. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just. I'm not happy, so I'm just gonna go do something. <laughs> and and then it created like a huge scrum, and. Uh, I got pulled out of the pile, which I don't blame anyone for pulling me out of the pile because that's what happens in piles. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Alex Dean broke my nose. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been dealing with a deviated septum ever since. <laughs> you haven't gotten that fixed yet? No, I should get that done. Though. I might get the, the, the guy to trim it up a bit too. They got a little beef on here. but uh, I got yeah. the same thing. I, I got mine fixed. And then I just broke it again. But really? you, breathe, you breathe so much better when you get it done. Oh yeah, I can't. I can't breathe on the one side. But um, yeah. So then I kind of learned my lesson. Like, hey, maybe maybe don't go flying into a pile if, if like you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so I tell like some guys now. I'm like, hey, if you're not like actually know what you're doing in a fight, like maybe don't be an idiot. You know, because like you could get you could get beat up. <laughs> and, and that's what happened to me <laughs> so speaking of oh go ahead john i was just gonna say we'll use that for uh the more you know with tyler <laughs> yeah you might i came back that. in the game i got those two nose things in my nose i look like a complete idiot like 
Yeah, it's just not worth it. Wasn't worth it at all. So speaking of <laughs> Buffalo, John's John's talked about the team quite a bit. Just like some tough years, a lot of a lot of losses. How do you? How did you like when you look back? How did you stay positive? How do you stay focused? How do you? How do those boys kind of bring it every night when you know that you're you're probably gonna lose? In Buffalo, that that was hard because like they were so clearly trying to get you know the first pick that Nick it was David. like. Right. So they wanted to lose or, you know, it was, it was just weird. You know, it was kind of that first experience where you realize that it's, it's a business and that at that point winning wasn't important. So like what time in your life have you ever been on a team or been in a situation where you're not trying to win a game? You know? I knew we were in trouble. I don't want to interject, but I will. When I, when I came to the locker room, when I was uh, third line left wing, I was like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> me, me pat coletic and uh cody mccormick are third line now okay i see where this is going i don't know johnny what did you think of that scenario like how like it it's just hard like what you, you just kind of feel like uh you know what what's the point here right like I, you got, it's 82 games you know and uh the goal is to get the first pick we pulled the shoot early too we traded all our good players early i think after like 20 games and the, the yeah. chatter of us being like the lowest scoring team of all time like uh, this is it was embarrassing but i think we had a decent group with you and steve ott and myself and we had enough guys to kind of really just not make it unbearable where you were, wanted to just like blow your yeah. brains out every time you went to the rink but That's it was thing, brutal like, you only you, you still have to play so like there's no other uh choice but to at least try to make it you know, manageable, try to make it, you know, fun. Cause otherwise, you know, you're just going to be just depressed. You know, you're going to be pulling your hair out every day. So well, at least we didn't have three different coaches that year and two different presidents and three different GMs. Oh, I know we did. We, we were going through management. Like it was going out of style. Patty Love Fontaine was in there for like a cup of coffee <laughs> and he was gone. I know. I know. It was a disaster. Didn't you have like six or seven starting goalies too? Didn't they trade all the goalies? Yeah, we did. We had a ton of goalies. We had it was just really weird. I remember Euro Halak got traded to us and he sat down for next like to a the day. locker room for, like for a day. day. I'm like, so where are you gonna look? He's like, I'll I'll be gone tomorrow. And that was it. <laughs> he literally was gone the next day. And I was like, cool, nice meeting. I, re I remember that. I think we were in Dallas. He got traded there. We're sitting in the little change room, like talking to him, and same thing. He's like, Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be gone tomorrow. And he was <laughs> all right. <laughs> See, so, yeah, he was too good for the team. <laughs> yeah, so we're like, too yeah, good. Yarrow, great teammate. Great I love teammate. the guy. <laughs> yeah, great guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! All right. Well, let's. You get traded from Buffalo. Was that a surprise? You spent your first eight years there. You had a lot of success. You signed a big ticket. You know, you were invested in the team. Then you get dealt with uh, Moose to Minnesota. Yeah. What What was that like being traded? Um, it was exciting because, uh, I, bet. I, was, I was going to Minnesota with, with Moose for one, who was one of my best friends. And then Jared Spurgeon is my actual best friend. So we grew up together and, uh, you know, our families are super close. So the, the chances that I would, as I always, we always wanted to play together. And the first mm -hmm. team I got traded to is his team. So it was like, wow, that's a dream come true. Um, Obviously, it was sad because I was very invested in Buffalo. I was there for eight years. Um, it's the only team I ever knew, a team that drafted me. Um, you know, I was, you know, invested in the community. Um, had some charity stuff going on. Like, I just felt like I was my town. You know, I felt like I loved Buffalo. You know, Bill's fan. Um, a lot of friends there. Uh, so getting traded was, uh, it was, it was bittersweet because I kind of knew that it was going to happen a little bit. They had changed the GM. They mm -hmm. changed the coach. Uh, and I wasn't playing well. I was coming off two injuries. Uh, I was making, you know, four million bucks and I wasn't producing. So it was something had to change. Um, so sad to leave Buffalo. Excited to go to Minnesota uh, and play with Spurge. Um, so that's kind of uh, that's kind of how it went. Yeah, Minnesota didn't last long. One year. You had a good year. <laughs> you know, would you get to 20, 30 points? Like, not terrible. No, it was a nightmare. I, I, it was horrible. <laughs> I, had, 
I had 22 points, I think. I had eight goals, and it was just a, a horrible, horrible experience. It's so funny how that is. Like, you think nothing's ever what you expect it to yeah. be. You know, you might as well just have zero expectations of everything and just let it happen. I was so stoked. I thought it was literally a dream come true. It turned out to be a nightmare scenario. Why was uh, it a nightmare? Just because you didn't like Zach Parisi? Just come on. <laughs> no, Bruce hated me. Bruce hated me, and uh, it just it just didn't work. Uh, we didn't 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 see eye to eye. Um, it, it was it was a tough year, but uh, and, and yeah, the locker room was a little bit off. You know, the locker room was a little bit weird. Um, but the team was the team was good. Like I think we had over hundred points that year, and you know we were our division was really tough. We lost to Winnipeg, uh, but uh, just a tough go. I mean, yeah. but it happens. That happens. Everyone has no. Very few people have smooth, smooth rides. You know what I mean? It's not just it, there, there's tough goes everywhere. And uh, you know, since I left Minnesota, I've been uh, I've been I've been happy with uh, you know my situations. I've been uh, you know more more at peace with where I'm at. Uh, you know, in, in in hockey and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, they bought you out, which isn't ever fun, but it gave you the opportunity to be a free agent. First time ever. Yeah. Dipping the yeah. toe in the free agency. What was that like? Were you, were you just getting contracts thrown at you like crazy? What, what was the shifting uh, like through all those deals? Yeah, I was, uh, I was actually, so I was bought out and then I didn't really know. I, I've never been a free agent. I didn't know what was going on at that point. I'm like, oh, everyone thinks I suck now, but, uh, so I was in Phoenix with my buddies and we were hanging out and uh, it was July 1st and I just figured nothing was going to happen. But my agent started calling me up. Look, yeah, you get this team, this team. And I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't, I didn't know we were. Heads up. So we were trying to figure out where, what fit well, what fit well. And uh, we settled on Toronto and uh, yeah, it was uh it was cool. I, I was, uh, Toronto was a very cool experience. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's the kind of the Mecca and, uh, everybody, yeah. everybody knows hockey there. You know, there's, um, just a lot of focus on the Leafs there, but the team, the team was just a great quality group of guys. You know, Did you pick them, you picked them to win the cup, right? That's why you probably had bigger offers from teams that maybe weren't as cup ready. Yeah, I, I honestly don't remember. I, I think yeah, there's a few teams. Columbus was one of the teams. But everything was happening so quickly that it was like, yeah. I didn't make a decision now. Like, it was off the table. So, um, we, we were just trying to figure it out. And I was like, hey, I got to think about this for a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know yet. I got to look at the lineup and I got to do this, that, that. But I just, Toronto was, they had a lot of offense. Um, you know, fun, fun style. Uh, so it, I, I think it was a good fit. Like it was fun. I, I really enjoyed my year in Toronto. I mean, I got hurt, but uh, I, I, I had a lot of fun there and, and it was obviously disappointing losing in seven to Boston. Uh, but um, it was, uh, it was a fun year. It was a good, I think it was a good choice. When you're doing that free agency, like you said, I don't think people understand that you literally have a, a few hours. The GM's going to offer you that contract. If you don't yeah. take it, they have to move on quick. Yeah. How do you make like? Do you talk to Dubas? And, and like, I say, did talk to him. Yeah, I talked to him on the phone. Yeah, I talked to him on the phone, and he he's a he's a great guy. Yeah. And, you know, he was uh, you know, very respectful and um, you know, straightforward. And you know, it was uh, he told me what was going on. Like he he didn't promise me anything. Like there's a lot of Toronto always has a lot of guys kind of on minimums that have to yeah. like physically make the team or they'll be with the Marlies. You know, so um, I talked to uh, Babcock, too. They said the same thing, you know, and uh, it was it ended up being a, a good fit. It was fun. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed enjoyed my time there. Um, yeah. And then went to, to Ottawa with uh, with DJ when, when he got the job there. And then you kind of have a little cup of coffee in Ottawa. Then you go right to Edmonton. It traded to Edmonton at the deadline. Yeah um yeah and that was that was a dream come true too because i was i i got to play for my hometown team 
you know, just so. dream come true. Tyler Ennis, like that's the tattoo. I think we're going to agree upon <laughs> dreams do come true and an arrow pointing right up to your face. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, so that was so cool. My parents and my family was so excited. Um, and I was, I was excited. And then, and then, and then COVID hit, which, uh, which sucked because, you know, we were playing really well. Uh, and, uh, and then it got shut down. We had to go into quarantine and yeah. Um, yeah. Then, and then the playoffs happened with the bubble and all that stuff and just was weird, but, but yeah, the, I played, I think I played like, I think I played like 10 games before, before uh, COVID hit. And uh, it was really, it was cool. I was, I was so happy, um, you know, to, to play, for the Oilers wear the jersey playing the rink like it was just cool because I used to go to the games a little bit when I was a kid and yeah yeah it was just uh kind of a pinch me scenario you know putting the jersey on well I was born in Edmonton too Tyler so I know I get it right, right? yeah but, uh, I remember that. well then what's what's wrong in uh, Toronto and Edmonton why can't they win why can't they do any damage in the playoffs you've been on both teams what's the what's the issue I mean it's it's hard to win I mean, if I knew, I probably I haven't been out of the first round yet, so I can't figure it out myself either. But maybe uh, it's you. You're the problem. Tyler. I think it's me, actually. Yeah, <laughs> definitely me. Um, I I don't know. I just think it's so hard. I think they ran into Boston a lot. And Boston's a team that yeah. uh, you know has been through it. You know, I think well, you have to be through. Look, like Tampa went through it. They got swept. They win. I think you have to have your calluses built up. I think you have to learn. You really have to learn. Um, and I think that's key. I think it's one thing to say that you're learning or that you're learning, but it's, it's a different feeling. Like you have to know do it, yeah. that, uh, you know, you can't turn the puck over at this time or, you know, you, you have to, you know, win a certain way. And it's kind of cliche that everyone says, but it's, it's the truth. That's what wins in playoffs and, uh, they'll get there. I think both teams are, are, are going to get there. Uh, who's going to get there first? We have a running bet going. Who's who's winning the first cup, Toronto or Edmonton or Ottawa? Oh, <laughs> hopefully Ottawa. Yeah, hopefully baby. Yes. Um, I don't know. I, I can't say. I can't. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Uh, but um, uh, you don't I have hope, to say. Hopefully, Tom, I, I hopefully I win before before they do. But uh, I, I I'll cheer cheer for both of those. Uh, Guys, uh, whenever I'm done, whenever I'm done playing, I hope that, uh, you know, both of those teams can have uh, success whenever I'm done playing. But for now, uh, we got to go. Uh, Good answer. Got to kind of keep growing here as a Ottawa group. And uh, this team, this this Ottawa group, it's a really good group. Like uh, they're young, they're growing, they're building, but uh, it's, a, it's a good team. And uh, uh, it's a really good bunch of guys care about each other, you know, learning playing hard so um yeah it's fun i don't know what do you think do i you mean, think? I, who's I think your favorite who's your favorite to win this year oh i don't care <laughs> <laughs> you said all. minnesota right i did say minnesota many yeah Minnie? i like many uh, moose uh, is having a he's having a heck of a year moose is a great player he's, he's having a great he's year just like getting better and better yeah, and speaking of having a great year, you're having a pretty good year. Twelve points, twenty four games, kind of re re energized. Score anymore, but yeah, I can't I can't score, but you got I'm one goal. Second. I'm getting second assists. I had a breakaway yesterday. And I flip flipped the puck in on the goalie's chest. So, um, of course, yeah, he... no. no second assist. I'm the king of the second assist these days. Does it but... say at the end of the year when you're negotiating contracts, second assist, or does it just say assist? All right, just says assist. If no, you're a fourth think, line guy, Tyler, you can get 12 points in 24 games. You're gonna you're gonna be okay. No, thanks. No, I, I I'm trying to play like I'm trying to play hard. I'm trying to play you know structurally sound and and you know play the right way. And you know you, you do get results that way too. You don't have to cheat for offense every every shift to get to get points. I've realized late in my career, but uh, no, it's. Uh, it's been a good. It's been a good year so far. We just got to keep, keep it rolling. How is the young kids in Ottawa? How are they compared to you? Played lit, dynamic duos. Marner, Matthews, McDavid, Giant Seidel. How is Batherson, Kachuk, and Stunzel compared to those guys? They're sick. I love the. Yeah. I love. The, I love the balance that they have too. Like Chuck, he's he's just like 
competitive, plays hard, but he's got skill too. Like, but he's a workhorse. He finishes his hits. He's big. Um, and then Batherson's just like, you know, runs the PP. So s- smart. You yeah. know, he's got tons of skill, could score and pass. Norris is just like, he, he's so good on that flank. Uh, just, you know, ripping one timers. He's a great two way centerman, too. There's just a lot of balance. Timmy, Timmy's got a lot of skill. You know, Shabbat just logs minutes and he's so, so good. There's just a lot of uh, upside. You know? Yeah. So it's a good, it's a good core to grow and, and, and just keep growing together because they're close to their, their tight knit, you know, crew. So it's, uh, it, it should be uh it should be fun to watch as a, as an Ottawa center fan here in the next few years. Would you like to finish up your career there? You're 32, maybe sign a nice three-year ticket. Yeah. Three years. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I I'm, I'm just living day by day here. I love, yeah. uh, I mean, like you said, we, I've got a lot of Ottawa connections it seems. So who, who knows, but uh, I like it. I love uh, the role I'm in here. Um, you know, We'll see what happens. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of going day by day, you know, year by year at this point. So we'll life see of that. a fourth liner. That's it's just <laughs> beautiful that you've embraced it. <laughs> nice so, yeah. One question I like asking like guys who played with John is, is to give a, our listeners a John Scott story. If someone were to ask you, tell us what John's like now, keeping in mind that it's a, it's a family friendly show. Well, I never um, did anything non-family friendly. <laughs> that's, that's not an issue. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, what do you what do you think? Okay, well, this one's not flattering, but it's funny. Uh, do, do you remember Johnny the uh, time uh, when T- Teddy put you on D for that one practice? Did do you remember this? I yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you missed a few you missed a few passes or whatever and he snapped and he just kicked you right off the ice yeah i think i might have broke my stick over the bench on the way out yeah teddy teddy kicked off johnny one practice like five minutes in the practice and said okay you're done and johnny just broke his stick over the boards and and that was the last we saw of johnny that practice <laughs> We might have had a little yeah. Indian rubber match in his office. <laughs> it was uh, no, did, I shouldn't boil, say that. Did but it boil? It, did it boil over to the office? Yeah, we we had a little chat because I, I didn't. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassing myself, and you know, it's not like I was a rookie. I was like five, six years deep, and he throws me on the back end. I'm like, what are you doing, Teddy? Like, I was pissed because I want. I'm like, I'm not playing tomorrow. I'm obviously out of the lineup. It was. Uh, it's not great. That's what I'm saying. Like those those year that year where everything is like it's just it's so tough. Like to just get through those situations where you're you know trying to lose games and you're yeah. going to the rink every day and you're practicing. It's like it's just tough. It's you so got Vili Lano's covered in paint coming into the <laughs> rink. It just doesn't care at all, and I'm just like busting my hump playing defense. I'm like, come on, Teddy. <laughs> Oh, he's not even mentally here. He's checked out. <laughs> oh, Working on his Billy Bano guard oh. that he used to bring. How long have you been done now for? 2016. Did you remember? I, I made the All-Star game my last oh, year. Yeah. Did you see Dude, that? Did I remember that. That was incredible. I thought they were doing a movie on that. Or something. They are. It's in the works. Disney bought the right, so it's very exciting. But I won the MVP of that game. So it's, I know uh, you did. I know you did. That was so sick. Who are the only two players in NHL history to win an all-star game MVP and then retire the next year? Did you retire after that? Well, forced. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually so sick, though. Like, what you have to you had like a couple goals, assists. Like, you were – where was it? Was it, in, it, was in, was it? It was in Nashville. It was a good time. That's sick, dude. So, so they're making the movie on it. They are. They are. That you, was did your, fun. you did a book and stuff, didn't you? Yeah, the book doesn't make any money. It was a useless. Never write a book. It's a waste how of time. Are, how are you? Uh, I can't write or, or read, so I'm or read. <laughs> what? What? Uh, how's life after hockey? Are you uh, you happy or what? Is everything I'm good? Mis- I'm miserable. <laughs> Do you miss it or no? You know, I miss this shooting the breeze with the boys in the, in the, the plane. Yeah, like that's what I miss them. I don't miss playing at all, to be honest with you. 
I, I miss this. Just, just shooting the breeze. That that's what I really, cause I got six daughters and my wife. Like I just, Sheesh, it's just daughters. a lot of, uh, a lot of I women. Still, my, are you pushing for a boy and then you just can't hit it or what's going on there? I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't know what's happening, but no, my girls are great, but no, life is good. I think you got to figure yeah. out what you're going to do after hockey before you get thrown into after hockey. That's the key. You know, I had kids to focus on and then I had the all-star game where I could go do TV shows and appearances and stuff. So that, that saved me. So you ever, you ever think of doing any TV stuff or no? I did a couple episodes of a couple different shows. I went up to California for a few weeks. I didn't really like, I, I was almost on letter. Star? Kenny. You were a movie star guy for a little bit. Yeah. And you, you ever watch letter Kenny? I've seen it a couple of times. Our old coach uh, in Edmonton, uh, Jimmy Playfair's kids on that. That's right. They asked me to be on that show. My wife kiboshed it, but you get You get a, Mr. D wanted me to be on his show, but then you got to go out and do it. But no, no broadcasting stuff. Well, that's why I'm doing this. I could have worked for TSN or Sportsnet yeah. potentially, yeah. but it just didn't. Yeah, the, the podcasting stuff. I didn't want to move to Toronto. I, I didn't want to. Yeah. So I wanted yeah, to be in Traverse City. You've been to Traverse probably. I just wanted to be here. So I have actually not been to Traverse, but I heard it's uh, Gerbs told me it's so nice. I oh, mean, yeah. he showed me. Uh, that's why I'm surprised he's gone. He showed me some pictures of a place he built, and then the next thing you know, he's gone. But his place uh, was uh, really nice. Yeah. But I'm yeah, it yeah, is. No, it is. Been, but. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you any longer, Enzo. This was great, my friend. Thanks for having me on. It's good to see you. It's been a long time. It has been a long time. I'll, I'll uh, shoot me your number after this. So we'll stay in touch. I'll pick your brain about Barry's number. We'll get him on the show. Yeah, he's, he's a riot. You Not as good to... as you. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm fine. You're okay. We'll go yeah. I'll get some sun. Come on. I'm going. Yeah, I'm heading out now. Who's the guys you go out with if, when you're going to like, let's go grab dinner. Who, who's, who are you texting first? Uh, me and Tierney went for dinner last. Uh, I, I, I'm, I know Tierney's fairly well. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going out for dinner again tonight, but uh, this is a tight, this is a tight crew. I mean, a lot yeah. of guys, you know, we all get along. So it's, it's nice. Um, really anybody, anybody who picks uh, up the tab, anybody. Terrence picked up the last one. Maybe I'll do. Uh, maybe I'll pick up this one tonight. Maybe go to. Uh, you got any good spots in Tampa? You recommend Cheesecake Factory? It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if I'll you pick, pick it up that, the tab, I'll pick yeah, up that tab there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll pick up that tab. Um, but yeah, Terrence, uh, Connor Brown, um, Batherson, uh, everybody, anybody. Yeah, they're all they're all cool, good man. guys. Yeah, it's good. All right, Enzo, man. Well, listen, go have some fun. Good luck the rest of the way. Keep killing it, man. You're doing great. It's good to see your face. I appreciate it. It's good to see you too. And uh, yeah, I'm glad everything's going well with uh, with this and the fam. And uh, good luck with the uh, six daughters. Oh, I'll let you know if we have another one. All right, everybody. Yeah. Tyler Ennis, everybody. Forward for the Ottawa Centers. Maybe first line forward next game. We'll see. After that second assist, it was a big one. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Johnny. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. Have a good day. Well, cheers.